Letting go of energy that's clouding your vision and holding you back. It's a life practice that I learned long ago that has freed me whew, so many ways. It's a fact that holding grudges against somebody who's done you wrong or replaying, revisiting hurtful situations in your head over and over only weighs you down and prevents you from being who you're meant to be right now because you're still energetically holding on to the past. The energy that you put into constantly rewinding to the resentment. Why did they do that? Why did they say that to me? I didn't deserve to be treated that way. All of that only keeps you stuck. It will never change what happened. You've got to press stop and reject the urge to keep replaying so that you can then fast forward into the now for yourself. You know, a lot of people think that holding on to things that disempowered them is going to somehow magically turn it around. Mm -mm. As I said in my message a couple of weeks ago about forgiveness, you have to release the notion, give up the hope that the past could have been any different. And you also must release the idea that people would do what you might do in any given instance. This is a big one. I had to learn and relearn before I actually got it. Expecting people to do what you would do in a situation only leads to your disappointment. Not theirs, they're going on with their life. So let people be who they are and either you accept it or you don't. Not doing that keeps you stuck in a circumstance that actually costs you time, costs you energy. And I can guarantee that oftentimes the person on the other side of the bitterness you're holding on to, they're not even thinking about you. In fact, they probably have just moved on they certainly aren't obsessing the way you are. Think of it like letting go of any bad habit that just doesn't serve your well-being. Not an easy task. Taking the road to a more enlightened, healthy existence never is. So this is what I want to ask you to ask yourself. Why am I holding on to this? How is this serving me? And really think about the answer. Maybe it makes you feel validated. Maybe it makes you feel righteous. Or maybe taking on the pain is your way of recognizing the injustice so that even though it won't be made right, it can at least not be forgotten. Then I ask you, again, ask yourself, do you want to be right or do you want peace? Woo, this was huge for me. The unfortunate fact is that having both may not be possible. And also, you may never get your moment of righteousness, so why wait for it? Choose peace. What I know for sure is that in this world, time is a moving on, and it's our most valuable commodity. You can never get it back. So staying in that loop, playing it over and over in your head of hurt, only amplifies your pain. Let it go. Exhale, make room in your heart for something that is uplifting Surround yourself with people who want the best for you. You have the ability to shift the DNA of your spirit and control how you perceive life. So why not lighten your load and let it go? When we hold on to ideologies, to, to processes or patterns that no longer serve us, it's clutter that takes us further away from our true purpose and the road to happiness. So I'm encouraging you to spend some time thinking about the things and the people who consume the most of your energy. Ask yourself which of these things feed your spirit, contribute to a more joyful life, and which of the things that do not. And one thing I know for sure is that feelings serve as a GPS for your life. So when you're supposed to be doing something or not doing something, your emotional GPS, your emotional guidance system lets you know. You just have to feel it listen to it. So spend time examining where your spiritual energy is going. If you're doing things in your life that don't feel right, stop doing that. And by doing that, you're creating more room for the things that give you energy and lift your spirit. And there are some things you'll be able to identify right away as not serving you. What is not serving you now? But others may be trickier. 
Whenever I've had a hard time, you know, figuring out what my gut is trying to tell me, I have to get still. And when you do this, you let your internal motivation be the driver and your personal life improves and so does everything else. If it feels right, move forward. If it doesn't feel right, clear out that clutter. And when you weed out that which doesn't serve you anymore and conserve your energy for the things that actually feed your soul, you'll live a happier, more fulfilled life. And I think that is something that we're all striving for. And what it takes to keep moving forward, regardless of whatever obstacle may be put before you. We've all had obstacles. If you live long enough, you're gonna get some. But the key is to be able to lean into whatever lesson that obstacle is trying to teach you. It hasn't always been easy for anybody who remains successful in life. In fact, sometimes it seems almost impossible but I've said this before, I believe that resilience is the single most important quality that allows human beings to triumph in moments of difficulty. So the no's that so desperately we want to be yeses, they don't have to break us. Rejection hurts, but it's what we do with that rejection that ultimately will be the key to our biggest wins and in turn, strengthen our resiliency. So if we can get into the practice of thanking the closed doors instead of lamenting the closed doors, Maya always said, say thank you in the worst of times and trust in the omniscient power to see you through because God put a rainbow in the clouds, she said. I believe that when you're fully present, that's when you're actually fully alive clearer, you're more calm, you're not distracted and able to experience all the nuance and wonder of a life more awakened. So when we can just tune into what's just in front of us, life becomes simpler and less crowded with the to-dos, the what-ifs and the why-nots. And when you need to focus on what to do or what to do next, the focus is just that. So deeper human connection comes from that way of operating in the world. And the now becomes your everything. Now, this is what I know, that it's one of the most impactful spiritual practices, knowing the power of now. Because the only moment we all have, you have, I have, is now. Past, already gone. The future, not even your next breath, guaranteed. When crises would show up or challenges or heavy feelings would start to kind of bubble up. I would then take out my bubbles, blow a couple. And what that did is simply bring me back to my breath. And this is what I know, that taking deep cleansing breaths is always a good way to come back into your body in the moment. And if you can't focus yourself, having a bottle of bubbles will do it. We all get the same 24 hours a day. And I don't know about you, but what I'm trying to do is spend my time maximizing the joy. Practicing gratitude. It is my single most important life practice, I'd have to say. For me, gratitude is something that is necessary and should be practiced every day because making space for appreciating what you have opens you up for a happier, more fulfilled existence, I guarantee, while ensuring that those blessings just keep flowing. This is the truth, it's a law, what you focus on in your life expands. So focusing on what you're grateful for increases positive vibrations and feelings of joy. Just one good feeling builds on another good feeling and another. And if you actively appreciate all that you have in life, no matter how small it is, what you will notice is that you end up having more. And when you hone in on what you don't have, you never have enough. So being grateful, I've learned, allows us to fill in the cracks and crevices between what we desire and what we already have with positivity. So we can pave the way for grace to show up and lead to an even better life. So how do you make gratitude a habit? For me, the first thing I do in the morning is I read some sort of spiritual enlightenment that allows me to start the day with a positive frame of mind that will only help usher in even more positive energy. Many of you, as I have been, as I am, are where you are in your life based upon what you believe. And it's not just what you think you believe on the surface, it's also your shadow beliefs that are holding you back from moving into 
the life that you believe you deserve. What I know is if you're not looking at the shadows, if you're not looking at what is subconsciously running through the tape in your mind, telling yourself you're not good enough, you're not worthy enough, you're not smart enough, you're not enough, which is a tape that's playing for a lot of people. If you're not conscious of that, then you end up acting out of that belief system and not out of what you know to be the truest or want to be the truest for yourself. You don't become what you want because so much of wanting is about living in the space of what you don't have. So if you start to think about that, really, why are you where you are in your life? The choices that you have made have been because of what you believe to be true for yourself.